This is part 9 of Angular 6 tutorial. In this video, we'll discuss implementing validation in a reactive form. Let's understand this with an example. So here is what we want to do. We want to make this full name field a required field. If we don't type anything in the full name field, we want to display a validation message like this. Full name is required. We also want to validate the minimum and maximum number of characters that we can type into this field. Minimum is 2 and maximum is 10. For example, if the user types just one character, then we want to display this validation error message. Full name must be greater than 2 characters and less than 10 characters. If I enter the correct number of characters, the validation message should disappear. On the other hand, if I type more than 10 characters, then the same validation message should appear again. When implementing validation in a reactive form, the first thing that we do is import Angular's validators class. This class is present in Angular's forms package. So to this imports list right here, let's add validators class. Now notice these two classes, validators and form control. Both of them are grayed out. This means they are imported but are not being referenced within this component class. Since we are not using this form control class anymore, let's remove it from the imports list. This validators class as the name implies, provides several validator functions. So let's look at some of the common ones and their use cases. One of the functions is required. As the name implies, it validates the required field. For example, full name is required. Next, we have required true. This function validates a field value is true. It's commonly used on a required checkbox. For example, you have a registration page and on that page you have I agree to the terms checkbox and you want to make sure the user has checked that checkbox before enabling the submit button. So this is one use case where we could use this function. Next we have email. As the name implies, this validator ensures the control value matches a valid email pattern. Pattern. This validates that the field value matches the specified regular expression pattern. Next, we have min function. This validates that a field value is greater than or equal to a provided number. For example, minimum age to vote is 18. Opposite to min, we have max. This validates that a field value is less than or equal to a provided number. For example, people over the age of 90 are not eligible for this insurance policy. Min length. This validates that the number of characters in a field must be greater than or equal to the provided minimum length. For example, full name must be at least two characters. Opposite to min length, we have max length. Validates that the number of characters in a field is less than or equal to the provided maximum length. For example, full name cannot exceed 10 characters. Now, for validating this full name field, we are going to use three functions required min length and max length. In our component class, we have our full name form control right here. When creating a form control, we specify a key value pair. Key is the name of the form control and value is an array. The first element to this array is the default value for this full name form control. In our case, it's an empty string. We can use the second element of this array to specify the validators that we want to use. We want to make this full name field required. So let's use the required function provided by validators class. Now one important thing to keep in mind is all these validator functions are static functions. That's the reason we are able to access them using the name of the class and not the instance. Now notice our full name form control. At the moment, its valid property is false. That's because we made this full name form control required and at the moment, we don't have a value supplied. The moment we supply a value, the property value changes to true. And we know this form control is present inside the form group and we have the form group properties right here. At the moment, form group valid property is true because the form control is valid. Now, if we make it invalid by deleting the character, Notice the form control valid property is false and because this form control is present in the form group, form group valid property is also false. Now when a field is not valid, we want to style that field differently so the user knows the field has validation errors. So in this case, we want to change the label text to red color and we also want a red border around the input element. 
in the template we have our full name div right here. Now on this div we want to use the bootstrap has error CSS class to style the form control differently if there are validation errors. But one thing to keep in mind is we don't want to add this class all the time. We only want to add it if there are validation errors on the full name form control. If there are no validation errors, we want to remove it. So we want to dynamically add and remove has error bootstrap CSS class on this div element. For that, we're going to make use of Angular's class binding. So let's use ng class directive. Now the bootstrap styling class that we want to dynamically add or remove is has error. Now we only want to add this class when there are validation errors on the full name form control. And remember the full name form control is present inside this form group called employee form. So let's use this property and to retrieve a form control that is present inside a form group we can use the get method of the form group and to this method we specify the name of the form control. In our case the name of the form control is full name. So let's specify this within the get method. And then we can use the errors property to see if there are any validation errors on the full name form control. Notice now the full name field is styled differently indicating that there is a validation error. And if you look at this touch property it is false. That means we didn't even have the opportunity to touch the form or this full name input field. And even before that, the field color has changed to red, indicating that there's a validation error. Some users doesn't like this behavior. Now they want the fields to turn red when they touched the field and left the field without providing a valid value. If that's your requirement, we can very easily achieve that using dirty and touched properties. So we want this has error class to be applied when the full name form control has errors and when the form control is touched or it is dirty. So when the full name form control has errors and it's touched or dirty then add this has error class otherwise remove it. So this ng class is going to help us do that. If the boolean expression returns true, this class will be added. If it returns false, it will be removed. Dynamically styling our full name form control. Notice now on the initial page load, our full name form control is not red. But if I touch it and leave it, it turns red. If I supply a valid value, the class is removed. If I delete it, the class is added back. Now let's also display the validation error message full name is required. For that, just after the full name input element, let's include a span element and the error message is full name is required and we don't want to display the span element all the time. So let's use ngf structural directive and we want to bind this to the errors property on the full name form control. So let's copy this. And within the errors collection, we want to check for required key. Now if you're wondering why I'll be checking for required key, well, when the required validation fails, what it's going to do is to the errors collection, it's going to add this required key. That way, we know this full name form control has failed required validation and hence, we want to display this message full name is required. Notice now, we have the validation error message displayed. When we touch the full name form control and leave it, we have the label and the border turning red, but the validation error message does not. To turn it to red, we are going to use another bootstrap styling class. Now what I'm going to do is wrap this span element inside another span element. And on this span element, let's use bootstrap help dash block styling class. Notice now when we touch the full name field and leave it along with the label and the border, the validation error message also turns red. But we have a small problem here. On the initial page load, we don't want this validation error message to be displayed. We want it to be displayed only when the full name form control has errors and if it is touched or dirty. So we are going to bind this same boolean expression 
to this span element. So let's use the NGF structural directive and bind it to that same Boolean expression. Notice on the initial page load, we don't have the validation error message displayed. When we touch it and leave it, we have the validation error message. If we make the field valid, it disappears. If we make it invalid, it appears again. Now let's also enforce min length and max length validation on our full name form control. So within this full name input field, we want a minimum of two characters, but not exceeding a maximum of 10 characters. So in the component class, along with the required validator on this full name form control, let's also specify min length and max length. At the moment, we only have one validator. To be able to pass multiple validators, we include an array and then include all of our validators in this array. So validators.required and then validators.minLength and validators.maxLength. Next, let's specify the validation error message to display when either of these validators fail, min length or max length. So in the template, let's make a copy of this pan element and the error message is this, full name must be greater than two characters and less than 10 characters. Now, when do we want this validation error message to be displayed? Well, whenever the min length or max length validators fail. So the obvious question is how do we know those validators have failed? On the errors collection, check for min length key. If we have the min length key on the errors collection of this full name form control, then we know the min length validator has failed. If we have the max length key, then we know the max length validator has failed. So when either the min length or max length validators have failed, then we want to display this validation error message. Now, one thing we forgot to do is specify the minimum and maximum number of characters. When we specified our min length function here, we can specify the minimum number of characters by using its parameter as a number. So we want to allow a minimum of two characters and a maximum of 10 characters. Notice now when I type just one character, we have that validation error. If I type two or more characters, the validation error message disappears. If I type more than 10 characters, we have that same validation error again. If I delete all the characters, we have the required validation. If I provide a valid value, we have no validation errors. And if you notice the valid property at the form group level, and at the form control level, both of them are true as expected. At the moment, all of our validation error messages and the logic to show and hide them is in the view template. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss moving them to our component class. Having them in the component class gives us a lot more flexibility, both in terms of unit testing and from where we want to load those validation error messages. For example, we can load them from a database table or an external file. We'll discuss how to do that in our upcoming videos. Most of our validation requirements can be met by using one or more of these built-in validator functions. If you have a requirement that cannot be met by these built-in validators, you can build a custom validator. In our upcoming videos, we'll discuss implementing a custom validator in a reactive form. On our next slide, we have the component class code and the HTML that we have just implemented. That's it in this video. Thank you for watching and have a great day.